So UCIS just reached the H-1B cap for fiscal year 2023. In this video, we'll talk about special considerations for those of you that were selected, for those of you that are not selected, for those of you currently in the United States pending in a different status like students, all the considerations you need to know if your case was selected in the H-1B lottery and if your case wasn't selected. So if you're interested in this topic, I'll see you on the other side. Hello everybody and welcome back to Immigration Channel. This is a place where you get the most up-to-date immigration news, immigration information and everything else that you need to make your immigration case less stressful. My name is Jacob Sapochnik and I'm an immigration attorney located in San Diego, California and I help clients in all 50 states and all over the world. And in this video, we'll discuss the implications of the H-1B cap fiscal year 2023 being reached, what does it mean for those applicants that were selected, for those that were not selected, and for those of you that are currently in the United States in different status pending, making decisions what to do next. So we'll go over all this in this video. But before that, if you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos, and also give us a big like so YouTube will be able to show this video to more people just like you. So as you know, the H-1B visa is subject to a numerical cap. There's only 65,000 visas available every year, plus another 20,000 for those of you that have a master degree from a U.S. university. Every year, the registration starts on March 1st, and typically by the end of the month, the initial registration is closed. Once you submit that registration, the online system is going to show submitted, and eventually, after they finish the lottery, your application is going to be either a selected or non-selected. As I mentioned to you in the beginning of this video, the H-1B cap was reached for fiscal year 2023. So if your application was not considered selected, then you have to try it again next year. So the first question that I get asked of is that if your application is selected, will they tell you that it's selected based on the regular cap or the advanced degree cap? And the answer is yes. If you're selected, they tell you whether it's based on the regular cap or if you're selected based on the advanced degree cap. Another question that often comes up, which is going to be relevant for this fiscal year, but also for next fiscal year, for those of you that were not selected and you're going to get ready probably by the end of the year to refile again, this is a very important question, is what happens if you don't have your final degree by the time you have to file your H-1B case? The regulations specifically say that the H-1B beneficiary must have their degree or the equivalent or have completed all the requirements of the degree by the time they file their H-1B visa case. So typically, if you're submitting your registration in March, UCIS will expect you to have completed all your degree requirements by the end of June, by June 30th of the fiscal year when you file your case. So in this case, for applicants of fiscal year 2023, the requirements of the degree must have been completed by June 30th, 2022. Now, if you met all the degree requirements by June 30th, but the degree itself has not been awarded, you can still submit the following document. You can submit a copy of your final transcripts. You can get a letter from their school registrar confirming that you completed all the requirements for that degree. If your school doesn't have a registrar, it can come from any person in the school that is in charge of the educational record of that institution. And that should be enough to satisfy the H-1B requirements if you don't actually have a degree awarded by the time your case has been filed. Another question that comes up often is the following. Can multiple identical H-1B petitions be filed by the same employer for the same employee? And the regulations are very clear. UCIS will deny and revoke any H-1B petitions that are filed by the same employer for the same employee, multiple identical positions. UCIS will not only revoke those petitions, but they're not going to refund any of the filing fees that were used to file those. Now, the rules are not prohibiting related companies to file multiple positions for the same employee in different positions, as long as it's all based on a legitimate business need, right? So as long as we can document that the companies are not the same, they may be related, but there is a different need, different positions for that same individual, UCIS will accept it. There are some cases where you file the H-1 petition and you have no receipts and you hear nothing from UCIS and your checks have not been cashed. This is confirmed if you don't receive receipts within a reasonable time, let's say you've been waiting for two months, you may file a second duplicate petition and explain in that petition why you're filing it because you haven't received any information and you are worried that if you pass the 90-day window, you may lose the opportunity to get your H-1B selection approved. So that's the only reason why you would consider doing that. And again, if you have an attorney, I'm sure that your attorney knows about this and will be able to help you with that. Another question we often get processing those H-1B cases is, 
when will you get the benefits of the cap gap provision? And cap gap provision is essentially when you go through the process of getting your H-1B and let's say you're in a student visa and your OPT expires, let's say in August, but the fiscal year for H-1B starts in October. So you have a gap of a few months. Typically, if you file the H-1B visa properly, you should be able to get an automatic extension of your status all the way through October to cover that gap. Now, people are confused that thinking that just because they file registration, the registration for the H-1B that you filed in March is enough to qualify for the cap gap. It's not. What has to happen is that you have to be selected and an actual petition must be filed with UCIS indicating on the form that they are requesting the change of status to happen in October. Unless you have that actual filing, the registration itself is not enough to trigger that cap gap and be very careful because I've seen quite a few questions from people that are asking me that and they have made mistakes assuming that just because they registered for the H-1B in March, they qualify for the cap gap. They're not. And again, the follow-up question is if a student's OPT expires before October 1st, will they be able to remain in the United States and continue to work? And again, as I mentioned before, under the cap gap, if they have a properly filed H-1B with a notation on the form specifically requesting change of status, such students will be able to stay in the United States, continue to work all the way through the end of September 30th until the H-1B visa will actually be active. And just so you know, um, for those of you that are selected after the registration, filing period for H-1B visas typically in the fiscal year is April 1st through June 30th. This is the time where you actually have, to, you have enough time to file after you've been selected to file your applications without losing your eligibility. And yes, if you file H-1B petitions properly, H-1B visas currently are eligible for premium processing as a recording of this video. So if you are filing your H-1B visa petition, by all means, use premium processing. Once again, now that the H-1B cap has been reached for fiscal year 2023, a lot of petitioners, a lot of employers are getting ready for next year. Uh, typically, we start accepting cases as early as November, start preparing them, making sure that people qualify, finding the best position. So if you are looking to file your H-1B visa, if you're an employer watching this video, now is the time to start thinking about it. And you can text me 619-483-4549. I'm here to help you. We've been doing H-1B visas for the past 20 years. Once again, if you have any questions about what I just mentioned in this video, post them in the comments below. If I can be of service to you, text me right here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.